Good to know you're still with us uh, now on this part of the breakfast. We're going to be talking about how we can manage illegal importation. We know that these insurgents in the country, terrorists, criminals, whatever name you want to call them, have access to weapons, weapons that even surprises our security agents. How do they come in? We saw this story and thought it would be a good stepping point to have this conversation about addressing illegal importation, especially that of arms. Um, it's a story on the Sun newspaper, uh, custom arresting three and impounding truck laden with guns and cartridges. Uh, this happened... Um, um, it, it's, it's been described as a plus for the Nigerian um, security agencies towards winning the war against uh, insecurity. Officers of the Nigerian Customs Service, uh, Federal Operations Unit Zone B, um, intercepted a truck loaded with locally produced rice with some sacks uh, concealed um, under the rise, uh, the public relations officer of the customs, uh, Joseph Atta, who made the disclosure in a statement, said that the bags, upon careful examination, were found to contain 73 locally manufactured guns and 891 cartridges. Why are people importing these things illegally? Uh, so to help us make sense of this, to look at how we can better protect our borders. There's still the conversation about how soon it will be reopened. We were told soon. That was um, um, what we, we were told. But people still find a way of bringing things into the country to help us have a conversation and make uh, some um, positive um, suggestion towards a way forward. Uh, we have joining us the Executive Director, Safety Beyond Borders, uh, Mr. Olarewaju Osho. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, uh, Felicity. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? We're doing well. Doing Thanks well. for joining us. All right. I'm going to start with um, talking. Of course, you already has mentioned how important this conversation is with regards um, the fight against insecurity, you know, and insurgency. For for, de for more than a decade now, we've had a continued conversation about um, closing up our borders, you know, where these weapons come from. So I want your thoughts, first of all, on how much better we have done with being able to um, seal up the numerous porous borders uh, across Nigeria. I, I like the way you put it, numerous, and then two, porous. Now, uh, uh, that our borders are numerous uh, shows that we are a large country surrounded by several other countries. But that our borders are porous shows that we're a nation of people that lack capacity of how to manage and govern themselves. You know, if you go around Nigeria and you see the state of our borders, the one that are defined, defined borders, you know, we have well-defined borders and we have ones that are not well-defined if we want to say the truth to ourselves. If you see the state of the borders, you actually see that we have no border. I mean, some of us have been privileged to travel uh, across other countries. I mean, let's, let, let's not even go far. Let's not go to Europe or America. Let's look at Ghana. You know, when you, when you are entering Ghana from, from Togo, you will see clearly that you are entering into a new country. At least there's some form of semblance of, you know, border. But when you are en entering Republic of Benin from Seme, you know, or from, you know, you just wonder, where is the border? <laughs> there, there's literally no border, you know? So when, when uh, you know, when uh, Donald Trump came and he was talking about border, 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 where we are going to build walls, you know, the, the borders were well-defined already. That's why I said they would build borders. I won't look and see if they are not well defined at all. But you, I mean, you don't need to just go far. Let any Nigerian just go to Lagos or go to, you know, uh, Yope or go to, you know, uh, uh, Meduguri and then just cross to the next uh, country beside us. You will see that the borders are quite porous. They are not defined. All right, you know, then. at least in 60 years, we ought to have done something to, uh, let's say, delineate, demarcate, you know, build some form of, you know, uh, perimeter fencing, either with, you know, mesh wires or with blocks, and then you put, you know, some semblance of Nigerian authority that this is Nigeria, apart from the immigration that you see. Just All right. Uh, we, we will still be talking about solution, but I, I want us to uh, backtrack just a bit to get a clarity as to the relationship between uh, porous borders and the growing insurgency and criminality in the country. 
what is the relationship and how do we begin to um, separate them so one does not um, amplify or encourage the other? Yes, that's the same thing we're saying. When the border is, uh, you know, not well defined, when the right thing has not been done at the border to say, this is where Nigeria's, uh, uh, you know, territory stops, and this is where the next country begins, then you see a lot of people going in and out. So you wouldn't even know who is from where. You know, if you get to Lagos, you see a lot of, you know, foreigners that are in Lagos as if they are Nigerians. And because we look alike, you know, there's no how you will know. So then, because they are so, the economy is so bad, you know, the, 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 the hardship on the people is so, is, so, is, is so much. People look for, you know, nefarious things to do to survive. I don't know whether you also watch this news of a woman right here in Nigeria. You know, uh, last week, who said she had seven, seven uh, children and she had to feed them. So she began to go on. You know, she will, she, will, she will buy gone, put it in a brand new bag, and then put sanitary pads and the baby clothes on top. And then when the uh, soldiers see, uh, they will just allow her to pass. And she has been doing that for about seven years, using to feed her, as, uh, her family, so to speak. So when, when people are down, you know, they say he that, that is down need fear no fall. When they are down and you introduce gone running to them, they will be very happy to, you know, to, to do it. And then because Nigeria seem not to even be organized in this security we are talking about. President Muhammadu Buhari ran on security. He won on security. But security has become worse under him than ever before. Look, in 2016, United Nations began to point the attention of President Muhammadu Buhari's government to the problem of small and light weapon, you know, proliferation in Nigeria, 2006. That was, well, I mean, 16. That was about four years ago. And you know, the same security chief has been there you know, whether as a, you know, Navy or as Air Force or as a, or as a, or as, as, uh, or as Army, I think it's only that of uh, the, the uh, police that has changed. It's the same, same, same old story. So that's why you see now people have become emboldened and they know that they can, they can just kidnap someone, demand for 5 million, demand for 10 million. So they are willing to take the risk because even those that have been, like, like the custom issue you raised, custom arrested three people. Is this the first time? This has yeah, been done and, and, and over, that's where and I was... over a, um, in, the, in the last three years, what happened to those that have been arrested? Mr. Osho, I was just going to ask that because I've, we've seen this story numerous times. We've seen um, reports like these where hundreds of guns and, you know, uh, cartridges and, you know, numerous uh, you know, types of ammunition were discovered. Uh, I remember a few years ago, it was alarming seeing maybe 500 or so pump action rifles. It was such an alarming figure. Um, how bad is it that you know we still have not been able to uh, at least shed any light on that investigation to see where those weapons were headed and who has been arrested and you know which which you know in what ways we've been able to you know stop those things from repeating themselves? Um, how bad you know had, has that also affected our fight against uh, arms proliferation in Nigeria? Now, you see. Political will. When political will exists to tackle a problem head on in a matter of months or, or years, the problem is solved. But in the absence of political will, you know, in the absence of political will, a president who really has not seen the problem as a problem, security chiefs who are just sitting and warming their chairs and they see this kind of news on a daily basis and, you know, it just, it just goes as business as usual. And the people that have not demanded, you know, you know, strongly and said, this ought not to be. We want a stop to this. You know, I mean, even though the NSAS protests came and gone, if Nigerians see the problem of uh, proliferation of small arms and, and weapons as, as a, 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 you know, a terror waiting to, to be unleashed on the country, we will, we will actually speak more than we are speaking now. We'll be on the street, you know, talking more than we are talking now. And you see the chicken is coming home to roost on a daily basis. This this uh, kind of uh, cache of arms that the custom just sees were the were the were the things that those who went to the to the school in Kankara in Kasina relied upon to do what they did, and th these are the things that are going to the hands of you know uh, uh, several groups of of terrorists of of kidnappers across the country that is you know emboldening them to continue what they are doing. So right, security let's... is not doing enough. 
You know, the governance is almost absent. And the people are taking it almost as if, okay, this is how we're going to live. All right, let's talk and solution then, now. Um, from your vantage um, uh, point of view, if you were to uh, give advice in spite of the many challenges we have to the government as to the, you know, the steps that need to be taken for us to begin to address the issue of illegal importation, what would you recommend? Number one, I recommend that government should be more organized, organized in tackling the problem. Number two, government should make a very strong pronouncement and say, if you are in custody of illegal weapons, Nigeria wants to mop up every illegal weapon from north to south, you know, within a particular time frame. Give incentives to people to come out and let them know that failure to come out, if any illegal weapon is found in your hand after the expiration of the deadline, you are going to be you know, in jail for like 20 years or even life imprisonment. Read the riot act and then make sure you, when you, when, 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 when people, you know, that uh, refuse to, 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 to do what they need to do, if you catch anyone, let there be a special, it may be a special court, a special tribunal. They don't have to go to regular court. You know, within one week, like those three guys that were arrested three days ago, produce your godfathers. See, there are, there are so many powerful people in government, powerful people in the security operatives, powerful people in Nigeria that are behind this. Abacha said it a long time ago. He said when there's gone on in, in, in the nation and terrorism and the problem is not fixed within time, he said ask the people that are in government. So the things that the leader should do now, they should show us that they have the will, the will to read the riot act and to get this thing done over with immediately. All right. La immediately. La finally, uh, Mr. Osho, I, I want your thoughts also on um, how the Nigerian Customs serv uh, Service can also do better. Do we need more uh, officers of the Nigerian Customs Service or we need better infrastructure to, to be able to seal up our board uh, borders across the country? The United Nations reports almost 1,500 uh, illegal entry routes into Nigeria. So do we need more officers or we need better infrastructure or better leadership? Uh, we need, you, you, are, you have actually answered some of the questions for us. We need better infrastructure. We need better leadership. Then we need to begin to think out of the box. Now, those who are in haulage business, maybe we need to set up, you know, you know, uh, uh, points where if you are hauling goods, you need to get everything that is there certified first. There should be agency certified goods that are being hauled. You know, if it's more than a pickup or maybe, maybe more than a particular uh, ton of, of, of things that you are moving around. The agents, there should be people that are in charge of certifying people with, you know, integrities. And then whatever they certify, when custom officers, uh, you know, find anything that is illegal in whatever they have satisfied, certified, they will now answer, you know, on, on behalf of those that, 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 were, that were arrested. So we need to put layers of high tech security, you know, apparatus and the management to be able to, be, to address this problem holistically. Otherwise... I'm telling you guys, this is a ticking time bomb in our hands in Nigeria. Uh, Olari Mwaju Osho, thank you so much for your thoughts and for your time this morning. Um, looking forward to another conversation with you as soon as possible. Good morning. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Right. You too. Pretty interesting points that he made, you know. And yes, I know that even a couple of years ago, you know, I had read these stories in the news about hundreds of pump action rifles that were you know, brought into the country. You were about the importation. There was a time there was a mopping exercise. We, yeah, we, I remember We heard also. that bring your weapon, we will, will not prosecute you. You have an open period to bring your weapons in. It is worrying. It is indeed worrying. I don't know how, you know, we can get our leaders to actually tap into the massive resource of people in this country. Look at the guests that speak on Plus TV Africa almost on a daily basis, proffering solution, workable solution. What is wrong with getting some of these people who have some of these ideas to be part of the process of, you know, changing the narrative around this particular uh, conversation now, illegal importation? I have, a, I have a, a big, a huge issue with people who take uh, positions, you know, leadership positions in Nigeria, and I'm not talking political now, I'm talking ministries, departments, and agencies. When a lot of these people take those positions, there are no set targets, there are no goals, there's nothing like this is where we are today, this is where we want to be in the next five years, this is where, what we have achieved in the last two years. You see a person who's run an office for four years, 
getting re-elected or re-nominated to run the office for another four years, and you cannot ask the person, what did your ministry achieve We're in four complicit. years? What We're did your ministry achieve of, in eight years? We're all part of the problem. Because I believe that the, the customs, um, Hamid Ali, when he, come, when he got into office, give him a target. We have a problem with our borders. We have a problem. We have a thousand plus porous borders in Nigeria. This is where we want to be in the next five years. This is your target that every single border in Nigeria must be sealed. Uh, this is not but an excuse. I'm, I'm not making an excuse. But you know, sometimes when people are in position of authority, it's not that they don't get the advice. Sometimes they do. But there are issues that will always come up, either politics or personal interest, or maybe you do not want to credit the people who have given you the suggestions on a way forward. If you don't want to credit them, have a conversation with them. The, the idea is let us move this country forward. Let us find a way to begin to deflate the powers of these insurgents. We keep calling them, we've neutralized them. We've not. We've not neutralized them. They are still here, kidnapping people on a daily basis and making lives miserable. So it is imperative, in my thinking, that government needs to re-strategize, rethink, and find a way out of these issues we continue to confront on a daily basis.